Hi, I'm Hester from the Access and Engagement Department. I'm here with Dr. Carmen Frakia to talk about our first instalment of our new public lecture series, Big Ideas, which we're holding in Stratford Library on the 8th of October. So, Carmen, could you tell us a little bit more about your research and what you'll be covering in the lecture coming up? My research is about the, the representation of black people in Spain in the early modern period. And this is the most important thing, because no studies have been done on the visual. Mm -hmm. They have been done on the literary aspect, but not on the visual. So I am studying images of how people in Spain depicted the African presence there, which was quite high. People believed that there were a very insignificant number of Africans, but there were, in some instances, in Seville, there were 15% of the population mm -hmm. was black, and, and there were commentators who said that Seville was like a chest, mm -hmm. full of men, black and white men. So the presence was very visible, but quite difficult to find paintings and sculptures mm -hmm. about them. And this is one of the problems that we are going to confront in the lecture. And is this is between the 16th and the 18th century particularly? Yes, exactly. It's, it's mainly from the time of the conquest and colonization in the New World mm -hmm. and the, the beginning of the Enlightenment at, this, uh, yes, at the end of the 17th century. And the new, when you talk about the New World, are you yes. talking about South Latin America? Latin America, yes, okay. the whole of Latin America, yeah. including aspects of, of the United States and the Caribbean. This is all about, obviously I'm not going to give examples of all these places, mm -hmm. but I'm going to refer to them. Right. Great. And Tell me, how did you get into this research? What got you started with ah, it? It was, the, it was because of my students. I was teaching about portraiture because I teach art, visual art. So I was teaching about uh, um, 17th century painting about Velázquez, who was, who was the major painter at that time at the Spanish court. Now, this guy, this big guy, had a slave, and he depicted this enslaved uh, a person called Juan de Pareja. So I was showing to the students that particular, that particular uh, portrait without knowing who he was. Mm -hmm. And I had one student from Cuba, Afro-Cuban, who said to me, Carmen, but were there black people in Spain? And I was absolutely stuck because I said, listen, Roger, I have no idea. I don't know how to reply to this because I am not equipped. I have no idea if there were black people or not. But I became obsessed. I began to investigate, to do research about who was the guy in the portrait, what do we know about him, and et cetera, et cetera. And this is the way I developed my, my research. And then I discover horrendous images, um, racist images about uh, black people in Spain that we are going to see one thing specifically, and discover lots of things about the lives of slaves, about um, the way they were sold and bought, and and the way they were branded, the way they lived, et cetera, et cetera. And you've talked about some specific images there. Are there any pictures you're going to particularly talk about in your lecture? Yes, absolutely. I'm going to talk about um, uh, the most racist image that we ever, I ever found in this field, which is called the miracle of the black leg. It's a, it's a legend, it's a medieval legend that started in Florence, in Italy, and it was and, and it was all over Europe, but when it got to Spain, it modified completely because of the experience of slavery, in my opinion. Now, the, the, the legend is that there was a guy with a gangrene leg, and he was dreaming and dreamed of two twin saints, Saints Cosmas and Damien, who were the patrons of physicians and, and doctors, and then one said to another, we have to help this guy. I said, one said to the other, you know what? A black person has died today. We can go to the cemetery, cut a leg, and graft this leg to the white body. So when the, the, the verger, the, the man who got the black leg, woke up, he saw that his black, his black mm -hmm. leg, the gangrene leg, was completely white, and because it was a miracle. Mm -hmm. Right, well, this, this image is, you can see the way in which the saints are cutting the leg of the corpse. Mm -hmm. But in Spain, they are not cutting the leg of the corpse. They are cutting the leg of an allied slave 
mutilated in the front of the painting. And there is a major departure. And if we don't understand slavery, if we don't understand the violence of slavery, if we don't understand this, we cannot understand that image. But I'm going to talk about this. Um, so could you tell me a little bit more about some of the other pictures you're going to be talking about on the 8th of October? OK, I'm going to show many pictures, but some of the ones that I'm going to talk is the three boys at the Dalich uh, Picture Gallery mm -hmm. that anyone can go for free and to see that wonderful painting in which, unfortunately, or fortunately, it is very clear the ethnic tension of mm -hmm. the, race, the, the, the racism against black people in the streets. There are three children. One of them is carrying water or wine, which was the, the typical mm -hmm. uh, job that black people have. And this boy, this black boy, was the, 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 the painter's slave, mm -hmm. own slave. And he's asking, I mean, he's having this, carrying water or wine, and he's asking for a, pi a bit of pie that uh, these other two white boys are having. And they denied him that. Mm -hmm. So this is one of the first pictures that shows this kind of tension. And it's very interesting to see, and you, you have the possibility of seeing here in London. This is one. And the other one that is interesting for me was to discover that there were black saints mm -hmm. in the churches, and not only in the black brother brotherhoods, but in all in all churches in Spain, there are black saints mm. because the church in that moment created black saints to have to convert more easily the Africans, you know, the people yeah. of God. Yes, exactly. So there are especially uh, especially saints from Ethiopia mm -hmm. that we call that meant Africa in mm -hmm. that period. But there is also a new an, a new saint in that period was from Palermo, from Sicily, yeah. came from Africa, Saint Benedict of Palermo. So there are a series of them, but I'm going to show the female one. Mm -hmm. So yes, and I'm going to explain that. And the other fascinating one that I'm going to dedicate most of the time is obviously the depiction of a, of a slave by the slave owner and the depiction of the slave about himself. Mm -hmm. The perceptions, the different perceptions the two of them have. Velasquez, or sea, the, the slave owner, depicts his slave in a completely different way. Mm -hmm. He depicts him uh, as a, as a, with a lace uh, collar that not even the king had it, that mm -hmm. was so expensive. He, was, he is depicted, if you didn't know he was a slave, you would never thought he was a slave, because he looks like a nobleman. Mm. And his, his, uh, his look, he's looking at the, at the audience with such agency and such humanity that is incredibly surprising. But this is a subversion of portraiture because portraiture was not for people mm. like slaves, only for the elite. Now, his slave became a painter because he studied painting with this slave owner. And then the slave depicts him in a different way. He still depicts himself as a nobleman, but he depicts himself with Europeanized features. And that came as a shock to me. And I tried to understand what happens. He, he, had he painted himself isolated, in a, an isolation, it would have meant something different. But he's not in isolation. He is inserted in a, in a, in a composition, in a religious composition, with Saint Matthew, the, who was the patron saint of Ethiopia. Mm. So he's talking about the, the whiteness of his body meant, meant the color of freedom. Mm. And he felt that he was a freed man, that he was the first Christian, he came from the first Christian nation before Spain, so he's claiming his freedom and his purity of blood, which is a, a complicated thing that I'm going to explain in the, in the lecture. Sounds really interesting. Mm -hmm. And one of the themes for New and Black History Month is about recognizing the past and shaping the future. Yes. And I wondered what you thought was the contemporary relevance of these images and this past racism. Yes, I think that we need to actually understand these images. We need to understand even poems that I will, I'm going to bring, small poems written by slaves and white people, and compare them. Um, we need to understand this, because if we don't understand the violence of slavery, if we don't understand that people from Africa were called black by white people, and people for, from Africa were enslaved in, in Europe, we cannot understand the contributions, the cultural contributions that African people in Spain had made in despite of the fact that they were absolute and totally marginalized. Mm -hmm. Right, and there are a few examples, of course, but you know, it's absolutely important to know that 
you know, I, it really drives me mad when people said, oh, Spanish mm. slavery was much nicer than, than British slavery. There is no such comparison. For me, slavery is a crime against humanity, and we need to know the roots of that mm. in order to un understand the prejudices of, of, contemporary, of contemporary Spain and Europe. So do you think the racism that we see in these images mm -hmm. can sh tell us about our society yes, now? Yes, absolutely, yes. For instance, that black life doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. That black life is cheap. This is where it comes from. It comes from the experience of slavery. Mm. Because the slaves were so, well, well, kidnapped from Africa, different parts of Africa, were brought to the cathedral of Seville outside, and they were sold and bought in auctions with jewelry, furniture, animals. They were mm. branded the an as animals. There was a, a physician who decided the price of each slave. And then at the same time, they were baptized and were considered children of God. So it's a paradoxical nature. They were children of God, but that didn't give them the freedom. Mm -hmm. yeah? but, but this is what happens. And I, I think we have to, uh, we actually have to know and understand this as well. It sounds super interesting, and I can't wait to come along. <laughs> I was wondering, what is the one thing that you would want people to take away from this talk if they come and join us on the 8th of October? Um, to be aware that when they studied history, they have to go, uh, they have to be careful. They don't have to believe to everything they say and they think. They have to actually think about, think about that there are histories hidden, mm -hmm. and there are possibilities of investigating and research something that nobody thought about. Like in my case, I didn't know, you know, every time I would go to a, would go to a bookshop in Spain and say, do you have some books about slavery? Ah, yes, in Latin America. No, in Spain. Mm -hmm. So this is the way you start doing it. Yeah. And so I, this is something I want uh, people who come to take with them.